this Quinnipiac women's basketball team just keeps on rolling. Another 20-point victory against the five-seeded Ryder Bronx in the MAC semifinals. Welcome inside the rebound. I'm Sierra Goodwill. Alongside me is Josh Silverman. Josh, the Bobcats did not have a pretty start. Ryder took a 12-2 lead, but head coach Trisha Fabry was so pleased with her team's response. We knew going in it was going to be obviously a very competitive, um, physical, hard-fought game. Uh, Paula had a great take to open up the game. We got a foul called, and then uh, Ryder really reeled off a couple of good possessions to take the lead. And then by the end of the quarter, we were up 16 to 12, and we didn't look back. Now, Josh, Quinnipiac always seems to have an answer to adversity. What impressed you the most about this run? Well, Sierra, what impressed me the most was just how the players never got down. There was a point where they were a little frustrated with the refs. Aaron McClure got a technical. But Aaron McClure and Jen Faye never got down. They never seemed to fight with one another or seemed frustrated with any of their teammates. They responded with positive play on the court. Quinnipiac responded positively, and the rest of the team responded positively. You mentioned Erin McClure, what a game for her. She was 10 for 14 from the floor. She's now just five points shy of 1,000 career points. She says that when she plays tougher competition, she tends to rise to the occasion. With Ryder, they play me really tough. You know, Stella Johnson's a great defender, and I feel like I play better against tougher competition because then I have to rise my game. Mm -hmm. So I think that helps me, you know, perform pretty well against them. Josh, time in and time again, Erin McClure just steps up for the Bobcats. Yeah, she was my player of the year. I mean, she I think she's the most talented player in the conference. What I love most about her, and I detailed it on Bobcat Breakdown a couple weeks ago, is how she steps up. I mean, in the NCAA tournament last year, in the MAC tournament last year, and again today, she steps up when the team needs her the most, when the competition is fiercest, and I'm excited to see what she does in the next game. Okay, and it's time for some competition for these Bobcats. Coming up is the championship game. They'll face either two-seeded Marist or three-seeded Siena. Marist took them to double overtime a couple games ago, so it would be nice to see that matchup as it would pose a little bit more of a tight game. But Trisha Fabry is not too concerned about the opponent. We have no say in the matter who we're going to see. Those two teams are going to go duke it out, but I'll be honest with you. Um, Siena has played great basketball. Um, their defense is fantastic in terms of where they trap their, their athleticism and length. They turn you over for, for easy scores that actually those scores demoralize a team. Um, and they've, also, they've beaten Marist already. So we're not putting any eggs in one basket. Josh, what do you think about the championship matchup? Well, as a fan, I'm as a fan of the conference, not of the team. I'm hoping for Marist because why would I not want to see a game with the two best teams in the conference? Obviously, I want Marist. The last time they played, it was a double overtime game. I want to see more top competition playing against each other. Sierra, that's what I'm looking forward to. And of course, Quinnipiac would benefit from that too, as if they win that game, they head to the NCAA tournament, and you know the competition is going to be exponentially elevated. Yeah. For more of our content, please check our website out at q30tv.com and follow all of our updates all day long and all day long tomorrow on our Twitters at Sierra Goodwill, at Josh M. Silverman. Thanks for tuning in.